Welcome back to Hardware Unboxed. It's time for our monthly graphics card pricing analysis video. Yet another one. It really would be great if pricing was normal and we didn't have to make these videos, but you guys seem to be enjoying the series. And this month, at least we can celebrate a rather unfortunate anniversary. Yes, it was just over a year ago that Nvidia launched their first GeForce RTX 30 series graphics cards when we got the RTX 3080 on September 17 and the RTX 3090 shortly after on September 24. Lots of excitement back then when Nvidia were promising to sell these GPUs for $700 and $1500 respectively, which really never happened. Supply at launch was low, far lower than the demand Nvidia should have realistically expected, and from there it only got worse with ever increasing demand and various market factors. In the space of 12 months it's been, well, impossible to just buy one of these GPUs off the shelf whenever you want at the MSRP, which is just wonderful. And back then it was shaping up to be such a great time to buy a graphics card. We just sat through two to three years of largely poor graphics card launches with Nvidia's terrible value RTX 20 series and AMD's continual inability to compete at the high end. So lots of people were hoping to jump on a series of GPUs that finally looked good and worthy of an upgrade. Unfortunately, upgrading proved to be difficult due to extreme pent-up demand from gamers waiting years for an upgrade, additional demand due to the rise of gaming throughout the pandemic, supply issues, and then the cryptocurrency boom that really began to kick in gear in January, which really crippled the market. Today's video sponsor is Gigabyte and their brand new range of AMD X570S motherboards and Radeon RX 6600 XT graphics cards. Gigabyte offers an excellent range of X570S desktop motherboards equipped with robust VRM designs capable of extracting the most from AMD's Ryzen 9 processors. Then for gamers, they have some shiny new 6600 XT graphics cards such as the Gaming OC model that we looked at recently, featuring a large WinForce 3X cooler. So for more information, please check the links in the video description. Enough about that, let's explore how the market is looking today. Most people at this point know why we're unable to still buy GPUs at the MSRP, but I wanted to focus specifically on a couple of things that we've been tracking over the last few months. The first of those is AMD's Radeon RX 6600 XT, which launched at the start of August. Now, AMD promised that this would be a $380 GPU, not the best MSRP, but they claimed that plenty of stock would be available at this price. It was already clear shortly after launch that this probably wouldn't be the case for any significant stretch of time, but now that we're more than a month post-release, it's become exceptionally clear. In fact, if anything, pricing for the RX 6600 XT has continued to get worse since launch, and it simply is not possible to buy one at a reasonable price in some regions like the United States. Here in Australia, for about 24 hours after launch, you could purchase one for $590 Australian dollars, quite a good price here that's effectively the MSRP in our local currency, but a few days later that price had jumped up to $680 Australian dollars, with retailers telling us that initial $590 price was unlikely to be seen again, with most expected resupplies being exclusively for higher tier models. As it stands today, even that $680 price point is long gone. Now you'll have to fork out at least $880 Australian dollars for an RX 6600 XT, and this is for the exact same models that were selling for $590 or $680 around launch. That's a 50% price inflation for a product like the Power Color Fighter in the space of six weeks. And it's not just in Australia where that sort of inflation has occurred. Many of the other regions we explored last month, such as the UK, have also seen the lowest price for 6600 XTs increase. So at this point, it's safe to say that AMD's original promise of good availability at the MSRP has proven not to be true for any significant stretch of time. Why has the price gone up? Well, simply put, the original price was well below the current going price for other GPUs in the market. As soon as AIBs and distributors get a whiff of demand and know they can rip off customers, and as soon as AMD stops caring about making the price look good around the launch window, prices begin to rise. Retailers are once again telling us about all the usual issues with distributors raising prices, forcing bundles, and so on. Just now it's being applied more to the 6600 XT than it was a month ago. Retailers are also telling us that since launch, miners are paying increasingly more attention to this card and its value proposition, which has reduced supply in the chain as cards filter out to miners before they hit retail, raising the price in the process. So yeah, you can blame miners once again. 
With all of that said, the 6600 XT is still cheaper locally and in several regions than Nvidia's closest competitors, the RTX 3060 and RTX 3060 Ti, which are priced starting at 1150 and 1200 Australian dollars. It's just that the 6600 XT used to be spectacular value in comparison, though still not amazing all things considered. These days, you only have to fork out about 30% more to get an RTX 3060 Ti, though that does differ from region to region. Despite pricing at retail continuing to be poor, availability is actually quite good in many regions. Not the USA, of course, but outside of there. At PC Case Gear right now, they have stock of every single current generation GPU, and for most variants, you can choose from a significant number of AIB models, with only a few that are out of stock. It's simply the disgusting pricing that means these GPUs are not flying off the shelves. If anything, availability has been fine for months now, and getting better depending on where you're located. The longer overpriced models sit on shelves, the more pressure there will be to reduce prices. While availability might be decent, gamers are not going to be able to buy affordable GPUs at retail anytime soon for two reasons. One, Nvidia aren't making any significant steps towards bringing the lower cost RTX 3050 to retail. We might see AMD release an RX 6600 non-XT, but that's unlikely to help that much either. While the 3050 has been available in laptops for a while now, we haven't heard anything from our contacts in the industry to suggest the card is coming soon for desktop buyers. The second reason is really the big reason, and that's crypto mining. It's of course been clear for some time now that GPU pricing is directly linked to mining profitability. It's not related to supply, it's not related to the pandemic or anything like that anymore. GPUs are being priced in line with how much money you can make mining on them. That's the guide that AIBs and distributors are using when they set pricing, and prices clearly change in step with changes to mining profitability. Crypto fans will probably rush to the comments to point the blame somewhere else, but pricing hasn't been changing in the face of gaming demand, which has remained high for a year now. The main reason at the moment why you can't buy a GPU at a good price is because it's very profitable to mine crypto on them, and miners are willing to pay higher prices indefinitely for essentially what amounts to a money printer. If mining wasn't profitable on modern GPUs, you'd probably have a new GPU in your hands right now at the MSRP because the record level of supply this generation up to this point is enough to satisfy the gaming demand. So what's been happening over in the land of mining in the last month? Well, the price of the most popular coin for mining, Ethereum, has been relatively flat month on month. There was a period a couple of weeks ago where prices were up. That cooled off, and for the past few days, there's been a decline. But it's a volatile market as always, so on the whole, it's been flat. Meanwhile, in that period, Ethereum mining difficulty has risen about 15%, meaning a decent amount more mining hardware is in the pool now compared to a month ago. This would have been in response to the rise in crypto prices over the last two months, but it has plateaued slightly in the past week. What this means is that miners have been interested in buying GPUs for mining, contributing to higher prices, though the impact is that when difficulty increases, the rewards for mining decrease. So seeing a rise in difficulty is both a good and bad thing for gamers. Overall, this has led to a drop in mining profitability. Right now, it's down about 25% month on month, though it does depend on the exact GPU in question. Cards where Ethereum is not the most profitable choice of coin for mining, such as Nvidia's LHR GPUs, have seen more severe declines. However, most of these declines have occurred in the past week after crypto's peak in price, and because there's always a lag before this is reflected in GPU pricing, we're only just starting to see those effects now. How has this affected GPU pricing on eBay, which we've been tracking monthly for some time now? Here we have NVIDIA's GeForce RTX 30 series looking at completed eBay listings in the past week for new GPU sales. Most mid to high-end GPUs haven't changed in price too much compared to this time last month, with the RTX 3080 Ti increasing by 4% on average, while the RTX 3070 decreased by 4%. Then at either end of the scale, we have slightly larger changes with the RTX 3090 increasing by 10% and the RTX 3060 Ti going down in price by a decent 9%, with this GPU still seeming to be in very good supply right now, especially for LHR products. At the moment, a significant majority of Nvidia's lineup, especially for their mid-range offerings, are those LHR products, meaning they have been hit harder by recent reductions to mining profitability. This has been reflected to some extent in pricing, although on the whole, Nvidia cards have been relatively flat. I suspect we'll only see price reductions if what is happening in the past week on the crypto market continues for a few more weeks, as it was only a couple of weeks ago that the outlook for miners was much more positive, and that helped to keep GPU prices high. 
AMD's RX 6000 series GPUs are not in particularly good supply, and there haven't been many sales of cards like the RX 6800 XT, and especially the RX 6800 in the past week. However, the 6700 XT continues to be available, and its price has risen 11% month on month, now back close to the level of June pricing. With that said, prices are still 25% lower than the peak for this card in March, and there has been no change in pricing for the 6600 XT, which is still a $640 GPU on the scalper market on average. Based on the volumes we're seeing on eBay and at retail, it seems that AMD are heavily prioritizing their mid-range GPUs at the expense of high-end products. But without any limitations on mining performance, AMD cards are more susceptible to changes in mining profitability, and that's hurt them this month. This has affected cost per frame value for buyers looking at a GPU for gaming. In August, and in most prior months, the 6700 XT and also the 6600 XT, not pictured here, have been the outright leaders in value. However, with some NVIDIA GPUs seeing price drops while AMD cards have risen in price, cost per frame is a lot closer in September than it has been. Right now, the 6700 XT is only 6% 6 cheaper per frame than the RTX 3060 Ti, compared to 23% cheaper in August. With that in mind, when you factor in the additional features that NVIDIA GPUs offer such as DLSS and superior ray tracing performance, it's no longer the case where AMD has an overall lead in value in the market. With this sort of cost per frame, I'd personally be choosing the RTX 3060 Ti over the 6700 XT, while the 3070 Ti is also not looking too bad up against the 6800 and 6800 XT. It's only NVIDIA's higher end cards that are really poor value right now compared to the rest of the market. Of course, in general, we still wouldn't recommend paying inflated prices. On the used market, prices for NVIDIA's RTX 20 series are up slightly month on month, with most cards in the mid single digits for increases. The exception here is the RTX 2080 Ti, which is priced far too close to the level of a brand new RTX 3070 Ti for my liking. That sort of pricing is pretty ridiculous since for $50 more you can get more performance and a brand new product with the 3070 Ti, but of course, mining. Then we have the GTX 16 series, which is still popular in the sub $500 market. Currently, these GPUs are disgustingly overpriced on the used market, and products like the 1660 Ti and 1660 Super have gone up quite a bit. You're faced with spending around double these cards' MSRP, and that's unlikely to get better soon with NVIDIA's reluctance to release an RTX 3050 for desktop users. Pascal GPUs from NVIDIA's GeForce 10 series have risen in price by 5% on average, again with some pretty crazy prices for cards like the GTX 1080 Ti. On the whole, 10 series cards are selling used for only slightly below their launch price 4-5 to five years ago, or above that launch price in the case of the GTX 1060 6GB. The 1080 Ti is also poor value compared to brand new RX 6600 XTs for gaming, although the 1080 Ti is much better for mining, so as always that explains a lot of the discrepancy. It's no surprise to see that in a month where crypto mining was pretty profitable and getting more profitable for at least the earlier parts of the month, that AMD's RX 5000 series jumped in price by a substantial amount. The RX 5700 XT remains an excellent card for mining, nearly at the level of the RTX 3070 without LHR limits, and better than the RTX 2080 according to Wattomine. So that's why pricing is so much higher than the 2080 despite inferior gaming performance. Similar effects with AMD's older GPUs such as Vega 56 and 64, both those GPUs are also very good for mining and are sought after in the market, so most gamers should probably sell their Vega card to a miner and move up to a high performing product if they haven't done so already. The fact cards like Vega 56 are fetching over $700 these days is pretty wild, and even cards like the RX 588GB are not good value given their much higher price than the similar performing GTX 1066GB. And that pretty much does it for this month's GPU pricing update. On the whole, prices for graphics cards rose month on month for September, but only slightly, with most cards recording a price hike in the mid-single digit range. Obviously, we'd like to see prices go the other way, so from that perspective it's disappointing. However, the crypto market has been pretty strong until recently, so only seeing a small rise in pricing isn't too bad. We still don't recommend people pay inflated prices for graphics cards, though we're at the point now where cards like the RTX 3080 are a year old, so naturally some people will be desperate to upgrade and will have been waiting for a year or more, and yeah, we don't blame you guys. If you do fall into that category, GPUs like the NVIDIA GeForce RTX 3060 Ti, the RTX 3060, and the 3070 Ti are on the better end of the value scale, and NVIDIA's LHR program has been effective 
at reducing prices on what would otherwise be strong performers for mining. Value has tightened up recently between AMD and Nvidia due to this, which makes cards like the 6700 XT harder to recommend at current scalper prices. However, while the 6600 XT has risen in price and continues to rise, it is also worth considering. The main factor that is going to see graphics card prices drop is a drop in mining profitability. That has been happening across the last week, but it will still need several more weeks before that's reflected in the GPU market. And of course, profitability might rise next week, so who knows? Supply and availability is less of a concern given GPUs are readily available on store shelves in most regions and have been for some time. It's mostly down to pricing now, which is almost solely dictated by mining at this point, so feel free to blame the miners, you're pretty accurate. We're also coming up to the holiday period, so it'll be interesting to see how pricing goes during that time and how availability is affected. You'd think that would increase demand, but a lot of people are still waiting for affordable GPUs from the previous holiday period, so it's hard to say. We'll be keeping an eye out and letting you know in these updates throughout the rest of 2021. Anyway, that's it. If you're interested in continuing to get these updates monthly, consider subscribing. If you also enjoy some of our hardware testing and other coverage, then consider supporting us on Patreon and Floatplane. Links to those are in the description below. Thanks for watching, and I'll catch you in the next one.